So I was talking to the Russians the other day. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And when I say the Russians, I'm talking about like, you know, some we have a lot of companies owned by Russians up in the Chicago area that are here in America. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to a, a company and good people, by the way, you know, I wasn't saying it in a bad way, but um, I was talking to one and, and we were just shooting the, the breeze and he was um, hiring a driver. He, he works with a, a recruiting company and um, they sent this driver to him and he called the driver he was explaining this to me and he said, uh, the driver told him that he was at the company's terminal, his current trucking company. And he wanted to leave in the company's truck. Okay. So he's sitting in his current company's um, terminal yard. Terminal yard. Mm -hmm. The new comp, the Ru our Russian friend. I like saying that a Russian friend. Mm -hmm. It's almost like I know the KGB, which <laughs> he's not. He's, not kidding. No, he's he's cool though. He's really cool. This guy. So he he calls him. He's gonna hire the guy, right? Mm -hmm. And and he says. The trucker says to him that he wants to leave the yard and go to a truck stop and there have the um, new company pick him up. And so he, what he was going to do was he was going to leave and abandon the truck maybe 30 miles from his terminal to where the current trucking company would have to go pick it up because he didn't want the... New dr new company to come to the terminal to pick him up. Okay, so not only was he going to abandon the tractor, but he would also abandon the load that he would be under because that's what it's sounding like to me. Well, I mean, I I don't know. I mean, I've, obviously, if you're leaving the terminal with a trailer, you probably mm -hmm. obviously have a, a load most likely. But so so my Russian friend says, he says, uh, I'm not going to hire him. He said. He'll do the same thing to me someday. Yeah, it sounded really, I don't know, sneaky. Yeah. I mean, I want to tell you something. And the reason I wanted to bring this up is because, and we're going to be talking about how bad freight is right now. We're going to be talking about volume and everything a little bit later. But this is one of the things that companies right now are looking at when they go to hire you. Mm -hmm. is, you know, does this guy have a habit of leaving someone's truck right. at a truck stop, at his house, on the side of the road, whatever the case is. Now, in times that we're in right now, if you're a driver that, that probably has a, I'm just saying, if you're a driver right now that has abandoned a truck in the last three years, especially... Recently, a lot of companies are not going to take you. Well, I mean, it was, I think it always was a little, not tough, but companies always did look at your kind of history like that. But like you said, now it's, there's, there, there's more stringent guidelines they have to follow because of, of like you said, the freight and, and um, insurances. Well, with the economy so crappy right now and freight, seriously, freight being really down, you know, companies are not hiring as hard as they've been. And so if you're a driver that doesn't take any, I don't take no shit. Oh, right? gosh, if, yeah. you're, if you're that guy, right? As soon as they lie to me, I'm out of there. That's right. I don't take their shit. I'm telling you right now. Um, I was talking to a company the other day that ran a guy's um, DAC, whatever you, whatever you want to say. The guy had seven or eight jobs on his application, and when they pulled his records, he had 15 more that he didn't put down. And I'm talking about in the last three years. Holy moly. So this guy had like 
somewhere around 22 to 24 jobs in the last three years. That's, that's insane. It, it really is. And I, I'm going to tell you something, you know, they obviously the company didn't hire him, and this guy is desperately looking for work. No, I could see, I could see so, but still, you don't do that. I mean, you're making yourself look like, like crud. That's like a job every four to six weeks. I, I'm saying you're making yourself look like crud. Right. I mean, here's really what it comes down to, drivers. If if you're a guy that has a temper, if you're a guy that doesn't want to do the right thing, and I mean this sincerely, drivers. If you're a guy that is willing to just abandon someone's truck on the side of a road or at a truck stop, you are, are one of the guys that right now are going to have a hard, hard, hard time. And I'll tell you, the other guy is the SAP guy, the guy that failed the drug screen in the last three years. E- even if he's already completed the SAP program, most companies that were hiring SAP drivers aren't hiring those guys either. No, they have... I hate to say it, but there's a lot better candidates right now out there. And I'm not saying that, that someone that has failed a SAP is a bad, a bad person. You know, we all make mistakes at one point in our life. And if they went through the SAP program, they're one that wants to change that. But unfortunately, when you have drivers out there that have made a mistake, even if you made the mistake of abandoning a truck because you felt like there was no other option for you, right now, these companies are looking at it and saying, they, they're they're going to do it to me. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I can't, for, first of all, some of them, the insurance says, no, you can't even hire someone that has that kind of um, background at all. And the other ones that, that can do it because their insurance isn't negotiating that, there are ones that, that just doesn't, they don't have that ability to hire someone like that because they have, you know, they have a couple of people that are in the SAP program or, or have a bad history, but then they have triple that amount of people that are not having any of those issues. So they have a higher retention or higher uh, pool of better candidates. So that's where you run into that situation. And those ones with the jobs like that, that that guy's insane. So, so much respect to my, my Russian buddy. He has a small company. Obviously he's in the Chicago area. Much respect to him for not wanting to, let a guy abandon somebody else's truck just so he can put a driver in his truck. Mm-hmm. I'm serious. That shows that shows the quality of this guy and the character of of, of I keep saying my Russian buddy, but <laughs> seriously, you know, in in real in realistically, much respect to him because he's like, you know, you're gonna abandon somebody else's truck to come and work for me. As soon as you're pissed off at me, I'm gonna get my truck abandoned, and I've got to go spend money to get my truck back. It ain't worth it to me, especially if the guy already has abandoned a bunch of trucks. It's only, what, in one week he gets pissed off? In two weeks he gets pissed off? Either way, the bottom line is, guys, seriously, you got to calm down. I mean that. Any one of you guys that are, that, you know, have a temper or you don't take no one shit, any one of you guys, honestly, that do that, you might want to start rethinking the way you're doing it because I know a lot of truck drivers that have the bad reputation. I'm not talking to the, about the good ones, Ruthann. I'm talking about the bad ones. I know that you guys think that jobs are a dime a dozen, but right now we're going into a period where they're not a dime a dozen. Um, and I'm, we're going to be getting into that here in a little while, Ruthann. But I will tell you, it's getting pretty nasty out there with, you know, freight volumes rates, fuel, all that. And I don't want to be the guy that's the Debbie Downer, you know, not, you know, the buzz killer. But right now, guys, I'm telling you, show some respect to these companies because it's shifting right now and it isn't looking good for drivers that um, abandon trucks. Ruthann, let's move on and we'll be, we'll be back to that story a little bit later. Let's move on. Okay. And we'll take a short break. Are you a trucking company that is needing to hire Class A CDL drivers? Then you've come to the right place. With over 25 years of recruiting truckers, diesel jockeys can have qualified drivers scheduled for your next orientation. They work with carriers that need solos, teams, and student drivers looking for local, regional, OTR, company, and lease purchase positions anywhere in the United States. Check them out today 
at www.dieseljockeys.com. That's www.dieseljockeys.com. Hey, drivers, are you sick of watching the other drivers bypass the way station while you are held up going through yourself? Well, download DriveWise today at www.drivewise.com. That's D-R-I-V-E-W-Y-Z-E dot com. And start bypassing the scales yourself. If you're a small carrier, an owner-operator, or even a big fleet looking for something better, check out DriveWise today. And remember, there's no equipment, no transponders needed when you're using DriveWise. Check them out for a free download at www.drivewyze.com. All right. I have um, an article here. I had received a, an email, and I wanted to go over it real quick with y'all because there was there's there's some really great feelings that, that Talk CDL has as being part of this. We had done an interview on... Um, next gen trucking and we had inter- interviewed Lindsay and we also spoke to David who was one of the schooling um, instructors that had used their program one of the first ones well David sent me an email um, talking about a person that is involved in the simulation uh, company advanced training systems and he was saying about how great the the simulator program was that next gen's been using and um how one of his students if it wasn't for that simulator he could have had a more serious accident he had blown a tire one of his front steering tires and because he used the simulator it helped him get through that situation a little bit more easily and and responsibly compared to if you never had that training before and then Next Gen sent me a message stating that they had received this huge grant from a, a company called Norbrem's Global Care North America. But because of that, they're able to provide, they're going to be able to provide a lot better of a curriculum for standardized um, training for this the next generation of truck drivers. But because of all of this that's been going on, they are now able to meet with over 100 high schools that are interested in starting a truck driving program. You know, it's funny. I mean, I love that. You know, I'll tell you something. Over the years, I've talked to a lot of drivers, a lot of drivers, and a lot of them tell me, no, I don't tell my kids. I don't tell my kids to, to get a CDL because cause it, it, ain't, it ain't like it used to be. I don't tell my, my grandkids you know, to get a, to get a CDL and I'm talking like 90, probably 95% of them Mm -hmm. have that, you know, outlook and, and look, I feel for the drivers that are of my generation and the older ones because yes, trucking has changed. Let's be honest. Mm -hmm. It, It has changed. It isn't like it used to be, you know, uh, the use of the CB is, isn't there. Um, you have more pileups. You have more. I mean, and and that's really not really the big change. The big change change really comes from the uh, um, DOT. You know, the the uh, Federal Motor Carrier and uh, the FMCSA. Mm-hmm. The the hours of regulation. The the um, service rules. It's just the crazy compliance rules that truck drivers have been you know, placed under in the last probably decade. It just keeps getting worse and worse and worse and worse. I mean, I'm not, it is. I mean, I get it. I mean, if I was back on the road, to me, it doesn't seem like, you know, like a lot of these guys. But with that being said, with that being said, each generation's different anyways. This whole new generation that's coming up, they're not like us. 
and and therefore it is going to be different for them. But they're gonna. But a lot of those new guys, I talk to a lot of new guys, and they love trucking. Mm-hmm. You, you see what I'm saying? I talk to a lot of 21, 22, 23 year old guys. They love trucking just because they ain't gonna have it as good as w- what we perceive as good. Right. You know what I mean? To them, it's good. The, a lot of these guys love automatic trucks. They don't mind. Ru- a lot of these guys that are coming up, they're they're happy that that they ain't on paper logs mm-hmm. that 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 a company can make them run freaking 20 hours straight without sleeping like a lot of us guys were forced to do back in the day you know they they're happy with the way it is so this new program that you just brought up mm-hmm. to me that's like that's like the grandpa and the father Passing it on to the young guys now, since our generation really doesn't want to pass it on. Now you have high school programs that are doing it. And I'll be honest with you. I, I think that it should have been like shop class. It should have been taught freaking 50 years ago. Oh, my gosh. It's a career. It's a, it's a trade. Driving a truck is a skill. Mm-hmm. It's a lifestyle. And so why I'm... T- I think the schools are behind, man. They should have been doing this a long time ago. Yeah, I'm sorry, Pap and, and Dad, that you don't want to tell your kids to get a CDL, but at least to me the schools are, are you know, putting it out there for, for kids to say, hey, I never thought of that. You know, I never thought of doing that. I think, um, I think it's wonderful um, because if you look at the generations, if you look at it, okay, your, your pap passed it on to you and you drove and you love it. Then you have a gap where it's not the same. There's been a lot of changes in, in the industry. And that could boil back to the fact that when those changes happened, you know, you had to have schooling under your belt. You weren't, you know, like you were grandfathered in. You ended up going to school, but you still were grandfathered in with your license. Then when they started making the rules of how you had to have the 180 hours and so forth, that might have been where some of that changing happened, where people, your average person just didn't have the funds to go and and pay for the schooling that was required at that time or the licensing and all that other stuff that, that they needed to do to be able to get qualified and start. They didn't have that ability or the schools weren't around. They were too far away. And the, the companies that offered the schooling, they had just didn't have that reputation that a driver wanted to stay at. So now that they are offering it into high schools, that gives those, those, those kids, I mean, the new, new generation, it gives them that opportunity to save a lot of the other um, mess that that some of the other drivers that don't want to stay in the industry anymore it gives them that opportunity to do it and on top of that it brings in the kids that are so used to now i mean it is technical type of generations so using the elds isn't hard for them to do using um the automatics versus the different stick shifts they're not it's it is different so it makes it easier for them and more fun for them to be out there on the road a hundred percent agree with you. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's the new, the new generation, you know, those guys, they're getting it done. You know, um, you know, a lot of people complain about, you know, the new generations and accidents, but let me tell you something, <laughs> truckers have been having accidents <laughs> since trucks have been made. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just that, you know, now with social media and it's like anything else with social media, it's more prevalent. You can, you hear about it more, you hear about more accidents, you hear right. about more and more and more and more. Um, you know, if, but if you look, I mean, sincerely, if you look right now at the last 20 years of statistics in, in accidents involving tractor trailers, it didn't hasn't fluctuated a whole lot. I'm serious. Yeah. It's like f- between 4,500 and 5,500 deaths a year. Um, as far as you know, I'm not saying all trucker fault, but like deaths per semi uh, in the semi industry. Um, so really, you can't say the new generation's any worse or better than that, you know. But the bottom line is, you we now have at least this program that's you know taking kids in school. And saying to them, hey, um, have you thought about trucking as a career? 
And I'm going to tell you something. It's probably going to help grow the industry to where we need it to be Mm -hmm. over the next probably. Because you have generations graduating. They're 18 and 19. They still haven't put the 18-year-old age in there to where they can go across state lines. I know they're talking about starting it. It sounds like it's going to. Um, And if it does, these programs are going to, they're going to just blow the industry up with truckers. If you think about it, you're, you know, if you got a hundred schools right now and, and let's say this also, I'm actually happy that talk CDL was one of the first uh, medias to break that. That was from that school in California. Mm -hmm. That was, they have a a course for kids to learn how to drive, to be a trucker. And we interviewed the guy and, you know, we started putting it out there for other schools to get participating and, you know, us and a couple other um, uh, medias put that out there and, here we are, not even a year later, and now you've, you're up to 100 schools that are going to start doing this. It, it, it's 100 now. It was, it was only one a year ago. One school was training kids to be CDL holders. Now you've got 100 that are wanting to do it. In a year from now, what's the number going to be? You know, if it went from 1 to 100 in a year, is it, is it going to be 1,000 next year? Is it going to be 10,000 schools? Is it going to be just like any other Votech school? You know what I mean? Are they all going to have CDLs? I, I think you're going to see that. I really do. And, and y- y- guys, you've got to know it's, the industry is going to be flooded with truckers here in the next 10 years is, is really my guess. I think so, too, and because I don't think the automated vehicles, I don't think the automated tractors are going to make a big hit out of it. So I do think that the generation of drivers that are out that are going through the schooling now, like the high school ones, I think they're going to be that next generation of driving. And they can't sit there and say, you know, I have I thought really hard because at first I was uh, kind of against young kids driving. But then after I thought more about it, I realized that every year the statistics have gone up in the in the trucking industry as far as accidents and and dry, you know all that stuff. it's it's been going up so they're not going to going ma- up I just told you it's the same for the last 20 years No I'm saying that the 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 statistics that they're saying you know that's why the FMCSA and and certain other companies are are wanting to stop different stuff because they think that that it's it's showing more Let's put it that way. It's not like we're having more accidents. The social media has been providing it more. Okay. But yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, but like percent wise, it hasn't increased, but the attention it's gotten has. Mm-hmm. That's really what you're saying. Right. Okay. Exactly. Right. And and you know that's why like they're saying about having the speed limiters and stuff. It's just because they're 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 finding that they think that the, that everything's going. Nothing's changed. Their rules might have changed. But the actual industry itself, when it comes to what the what what's happening, it hasn't changed. It's not the drivers that are having the issue. It's the the cars and the kids coming out of of people driving in their their cars, not knowing the knowledge for a trucking. A yeah. truck oh, is, yeah. is where a lot of the, these accidents and different stuff is happening. It's not the driving itself. You know, it's not the trucking industry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I mean, so it remains to be seen. Let's see how these programs go. And let's see how, you know, again, you know, the, the training that they're getting and, and, you know, if I, I don't remember the actual curriculum, but these kids have to go through X amount of hours before they even get their CDL. Then they have to go through X amount of hours on, you know, in some kind of a, a mentor program, I think. And then they've got to be with a trainer. So they're going to be pretty well trained by the time they actually get on the road. Mm -hmm. I I think so. But, well, and, and I'll tell you what, I'm not, I'm not against um, 18 year old, 19 year old kids driving a tractor trailer. They've been able to drive a tractor trailer for the last 50 years if they stayed in their own state. And I was one of those kids. Okay. At 17, I had my, my permit to drive a tractor trailer at 17. Mm -hmm. I had my permit and I was driving legally with my grandfather in the truck. Mm -hmm. So I would tell you guys that it's all in the, it's all in the, any, a job like that, it's all in the person. And if they care enough to be good at what they're doing. So it remains to be seen, but good article. So moving on, moving on, moving on. And let's take a break. Truck Parking Club is a network of instantly reservable daily and monthly truck parking locations throughout the U.S. Truck Parking Club helps connect truckers to truck parking locations throughout the U.S. via truckparkingclub.com. Our networks is made up 
of property owners that have locations adequate for truck parking to list on the platform. This includes trucking companies, storage companies, CDL schools, trailer leasing companies, real estate investors, truck parking operators, and more. Go to truckparkingclub.com today. Drivers, if you're looking for a local home everyday driving job, apply with Carter Lumber today. They have positions for Class A and Class B local drivers. They can take experienced drivers, students, and non-CDL drivers. With over 160 locations, chances are they have a position for you. So go to carterlumber.com forward slash talk CDL and apply today. Again, that's carterlumber.com forward slash talk CDL. Thank you. If you're a driver looking for a new trucking job, check out NCI. NCI offers the following. New Kenworth T680s, competitive wages, solo team and students welcome, plus a full benefit package for you and your family. Check them out today at 888-311-7076. That's 888-7076. And tell them TalkCDL sent you. Ruthann, here's a story that I missed. Um, it happened a couple of weeks ago, a lawsuit, um, involving a trucker that was, and you know me, I watch those videos with cops arresting people. I know they're so annoying to me. I know, but ch- to listen to this, it, was, it says trucker to receive $500,000 for wrongful lo- loitering arrest while making a delivery, eating muffins. Um, it, Listen, I'm just, just going to read this. So, yeah, I'm st- the title still got me. Could, repeat the title because I'm still stuck on that. It's it says it says trucker to receive a five hundred thousand dollars for wrongful loitering arrest while making a delivery and eating muffins. Basically, I, I added the and on. So listen to this. It says a truck driver was awarded five hundred thousand dollars for a wrongful arrest during a delivery to a grocery store, San Bernardino County. California supervisors agreed to the settlement on Tuesday, February 7th. So it happened up about a month ago, okay? Um, and it was from stemming back from a 2019 incident. So the it, this happened back in 2019, and they just went to court um, this year. It says, according to the San Bernardino Sun, truck driver Tommy Franks Jr. was making a delivery to a Winco supermarket in apple valley so he parked his rig behind the building at the loading dock and went inside to inform management of the delivery and buy some muffins as a snack and i'm going to tell you something i've done that when i used to deliver you know what i mean like when i was delivering in new york city a lot or wherever you were delivering if you were going to get something to eat you 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 pulled up to the dock, you went in, you said, hey, I'm here to deliver. They knew who you were. And and sometimes you'd walk over to the deli and get a sandwich, whatever. You know what I mean? It's just this. Right. Keeping the business with them, too. Yeah, exactly. So, it's, so it says, as Franks was walking back to his truck, so now he's coming out, right? It says, San, Ber- San Bernardino County Sheriff's deputies tried to stop Franks to question him. It said, when officers asked what he was doing, Franks responded only walking, Right. He said, I'm walking. Mm -hmm. The officers then asked Franks for identification, but he refused and stated he was being illegally detained. Franks was then placed under arrest for loitering despite holding the manifest for the delivery in his hand and wearing a uniform with a logo matching the logo on the semi-truck. So... I know what you're thinking. Maybe he was cocky, blah, blah, blah. And he might have been a little cocky when the cops said, what are you, what are you doing there? He said, I'm walking. You know what I mean? It was, might, have, might have been a little bit cocky. But so what? The guy, the guy was, he's carrying the manifest. He's going to the tractor trailer, right? He's walking out. And, and um, it says, Franks asked officers, okay, how can I be loitering if I'm walking? So they're arresting him for loitering. Loitering means you're just hanging out somewhere and staying there. That's loitering, okay? So it's a, a legitimate question back. You're, you're going to arrest me for loitering? I'm, I'm walking. I just came walking out of the... It was funny as he came walking out of the back of the store where a delivery guy would be coming from, right? It says, 
and asked him multiple times to speak to a supervisor. But officers told Frank Franks that he was being hostile and had taken a fighting stance leading to his arrest. Once placed in the back of the patrol car, Franks asked the deputy. Are you ready what he asked the deputy? Hmm. He says, is it hard to breathe with your head so far up your ass? <laughs> now, I mean, look, I'm going to be honest with you. When I was a trucker, I probably would have asked the cop the same thing. I'm serious. That's how, That to me, we can get into this, to this, what rights you have and what rights you don't have. But you don't, you have rights, especially if you're walking. Okay. Some of these arrests, some of these arrests are bogus. They really are. That's bogus right there. I, I can, I can understand that. I just don't like the, I just don't like the. Now, well, here, listen. Attitude. L- let me finish it. He says, and the deputy, after he asked him if he, you know, if, if the cop had his head up his ass. They, now, this got to remember, the guy's in the back of the patrol car. It says the deputy grabbed Frank's beanie off his head in a response. So the cop got all pissed off because the guy, I guess he thought he was disrespecting his authority. It said Frank's spent that night in jail and was released the next day. He was then charged with resisting arrest, but the San Bernardino County District's attorney office dropped the case because it had insufficient evidence. Frank's attorney, Jerry Steering, says that legally the trucker did nothing wrong. It was apparent to Mr. Franks uh, that both the deputy's decision to arrest him and to apply the handcuffs in an aggressively tight manner were in retaliation for Mr. Frank's verbal protests and for Mr. Frank's request to speak with a supervisor, said a court document filed by Steering. My guy is dumb enough to think he has rights, Steering said. It's not a crime in the state of California to refuse to identify yourself to a cop even if they have legal reason to detain you. The sheriff's department declined to comment on the incident on Tuesday. Now, my advice is cooperate with the police, but also don't be a bootlicker. I'm serious. I mean that, Ruthann. I'm sorry. You know, you don't, nobody has this, the right to just stop and ask you what you're doing. You know, now maybe they thought, okay, he's walking behind the building. Maybe they didn't see him come out and they asked him, what are you doing back here? It's, here's what people got to understand. It's a public parking lot it's a public accessible parking lot loitering is one thing but like if you got a muffin in your hand that you just bought from the store and you have the paperwork showing that you are walking out of the store and making a delivery there should be it was it was strictly the cop's pride because he said i'm walking instead of saying oh i'm I'm the delivery guy you know, and maybe the guy should have said, oh, I'm making a delivery here. I'm just going out to my truck instead of saying I'm walking. I get that. I do get that. But either way, okay, in it, before he arrested him, he obviously showed him, hey, look, man, I have the manifest here that matches my delivery. What are your thoughts? Usually when you go and you're, you're in front of a strip mall or any of those places, it has a sign that, you know, you're not supposed to go back there unless you are a delivery truck or certain things. Like, they uh, pick up and deliveries only or something like that, it will say. So you're not supposed to be behind those places. So if the guy was walking back there, and I'm usually one of those people that look at it from a different perspective, you know, maybe there was things going on in the past and they seen some guy walking back there and they were asking him, you know, the thing that got me that, that you mentioned is his shirt matched the tractor. So they should have automatically made the association of this guy must be the delivery guy. Cause you know, that tractor has that logo on it. And so does that guy's shirt. They should have made that, but you know, I don't, I don't, I guess I just don't like sarcasm is fun to a point, but when you know, when, when you're not jesting with one another and it's just, you know, you're getting a question asked of you, to use sarcasm then, you're literally asking for conflict. 
all the time. It doesn't matter if it's with a cop or if it's with another person. If someone comes up to you and you ask them a simple question and they're going to be sarcastic back to you, they're automatically opening up a door for an argument or a fight or, or something to happen. You don't, you're just not, you, you don't just go and be sarcastic with someone otherwise. I, I'm, and look, I get that. And I even said, I agree with you. I, I, I said that, you know, perhaps he could have just said, Hey, I'm making a delivery here. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm just coming out to my truck, you know? Um, but at the same time, you got to understand not everybody's a good communicator. Not everybody is, you know, verbally, um, exquisite, you know what I mean? And in, in, in saying something, a lot of people kind of clam up or shut up. You got, I see the look on your face. You want to say something? Well, yeah, I do. Because if you can't sit there and communicate on a proper level enough to answer a question directly instead of being sarcastic, then don't be in a job that you're going to have to see the public. Okay. Chuck so, driver's got to go in and see people. So, well, I just, I still think though. I'm not saying the cops were right either. Well, I, here's my problem. I don't have a problem with cops. I have a problem with cops that are called law enforcement officers and don't know the laws they're supposed to be enforcing. Okay, when you make stuff up to frisk somebody or to pat somebody down or to ID somebody, okay, when you don't have the right to do, you're, 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 you're lying to get an identification off, to, off of somebody. And if the guy was walking, he's not loitering. He's allowed to walk in those areas. Even if he wasn't the delivery driver, you're allowed to walk. Unless it says private property, no trespassing. And you look at almost every grocery store. There is not one. There's nothing back there that says you are not allowed to walk behind the store. Okay. That I've ever seen. Now there could be, it could be private property in some places, but that was said it was a quick mart or a quick co, which is a public store. Okay. So now I will say in in the cop's defense, if there are signs up there that says he ain't allowed to be walking back there, that's one thing. But if you're freaking walking, okay, that's not loitering, just like he asked. So I have an issue with that. You know, I'm, I don't, I don't have an issue. I do have an issue also with people that are cocky. He could have, the, the guy could have de-escalated it by just explaining it to the cop in the first place. Hey, I'm the delivery guy, you know, and here's my paperwork. I'm just, I'm just, I just went in to grab a muffin. You know, you could have, you could have ended the entire thing right there. There's no doubt. I agree with that, but still, you know, there's nothing in the law. If, If we just go by the law, Okay, there's nothing in the law that states you got to communicate perfectly professional with everybody. You know what I mean? And so the guy was kind of probably cocky when he said, I'm walking. I'm just walking. And maybe, maybe that's what he thought the cop wanted to hear. I'm just walking through. I'm walking. I don't know. I wasn't there. It could have been. You're looking at me like, no, the guy was the guy was cocky. Anyways, look, bottom line, the trucker got five hundred thousand dollars because he was illegally arrested. And you know what? I say time to move on. Moving on. <laughs> Ruth, she's a defender of cops. And I'm I, a defender of anybody. I'm the I'm the I'm I'm the defender of the little guy or the guy that's getting wrongfully done. I mean, I look at both things. I am not the cup. My cup's half empty. I'm the cup's half full girl. Well, and so look, I always look at that. I'm the defender on who's right and wrong. I I like I told you before. When it comes to like truckers, if a trucker's a bad trucker. I don't sit here, you know, we're a trucking talk show, but I don't sit here and, and, and defend a guy that's doing wrong. You know what I mean? I'm 100%. I'll say you're doing right or you're doing wrong. But to me, when your rights are taken away, I don't care. I don't care as a citizen, not even as a trucker, as a citizen, if it's not legally right for you to stop and ask a guy why he's walking through there, okay, or what he's doing there, if he's in a walk motion, all right, then I would say that that was wrong to begin with. So you illegally initiated it when you stopped to ask him what he's doing walking through. Oh, well, he didn't say what are you doing walking through. He said, what are you doing? And if he knew he was walking, it was walking. Maybe Anyways. he was standing there doing <laughs> nothing but open up in his pack of muffins so he wasn't walking at the time. Maybe he had something they were doing, and they looked up, and the guy's just standing there messing with muffins. I don't know. Anyways, we can hash it out later. All right, moving on. Moving okay. on. Take another quick break. All right. 
here we are back again, Ruth Ann. You know, I uh, wanted to tell you something, and I, 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 this is really what I wanted to talk about the most right here is it's 2008 all over. Yeah. I'm serious. It really is. Um, and the reason I say that is because I've had um, trucking companies tell me that they're not even advertising hardly at all for truckers because they're not desperately needing them right now. Mm -hmm. And their advertising is down, but their phones are ringing off the hook. And that reminds me of 2008. 2008 was when most trucking companies didn't even have to advertise for a truck driver. And they were calling because that was when the big bubble, do you remember the big bubble? Mm -hmm. The real estate bubble. The economy crashed. And truckers were calling. And I remember I was working for a trucking company back then. And they would call and I would answer the phone. And they'd be like, hey, are you guys hiring? So, So you know when... A trucker asks you if you're hiring, you know you're in crappy times. Because in normal times, everybody's hiring a trucker. In normal times, yes. You would always have a job as a truck driver. Right. In normal times, if you have a Class A CDL and you keep your record clean, you could just about name your price and, and name your company and you can go anywhere you want and get a job. But in 2008, okay, Truckers would call and they would, this is what they would say. And I've had them say this to me back, this was 2008. They said, are you hiring? I'll, I'll do anything you need. I'll even run New York City. Nowhere to lie. Mm -hmm. So they were saying to me, I'll even unload. I'll even run New York. Well, trucking companies are starting to hear that now. And it goes back to what we started off talking about. You know, it's from guys that can't get a job. It's from guys that have the, um, abandonments. It's drivers that have the SAP program, the SAP program. Yes. And I'm going to tell you something. I got a source. I've got a source that told me this week, FedEx. And I, and I went ahead and looked it up and their, their volumes down like 11 to 15%, which is horrible. But they said four major carriers, four major carriers in the United States. And when I say major, I'm talking about thousands of trucks for these, these companies. And you guys probably can give, probably could guess them. They're in the top 10 largest companies. Mm -hmm. They lost 60% of their FedEx freight. Wow. This is, this is what my source told me. And, and the 60% of their FedEx de dedicated runs were lost. And that was all in the last month or so, month or two. Um, and it's been happening since like September. Well, that is a killer. That is a killer. And I've been hearing that a lot of FedEx drivers, Ruthann, are applying for jobs. And I'm going to tell you something. I was talking to a trucking company um, a couple of weeks ago. And they were getting like an excessive amount of FedEx drivers that were driving for contractors mm -hmm. applying with them. And some of these guys have been with their contractor making really good money at these FedEx companies, these contractors. And um, do you know how many out of like, I don't know how many applied with this one company, but do you know how many they hired? Hmm. None. None. Zero. Why? Because every FedEx contractor that they called, okay. I don't have the list, but there was a pretty good sized list. The guy was telling me every one of them will not verify their, their driver's employment. Why? Because they just don't feel they have to do, a, you know, comply with DOT regulations. I don't know. But a lot of these truck, I was talking to a trucker this morning and he's working for FedEx and he said he was looking for a job. And I said, dude, beware of one thing. When you go to apply with another company right now, if you're a FedEx driver, okay, you're driving doubles, whatever the case is there's a good chance that your boss will not verify that you're even a truck driver for them. And most trucking companies cannot hire you if they can't verify at least one year in the last three. Are these the ones that, like, like that drive for an owner op that's, or a lease that's leased to like 
a, a contractor for FedEx. Right. See, FedEx. Okay. That's how you know, like you know, how, like Mayflower and United, the the furniture movers. You know how that they are. Um, uh, all run by contractors, a, what they call agents, you know, McAllister being the biggest, you got to work for their agents in order to actually drive for them. Well, FedEx is the same way. They're, they're called contractors. They have, they have a, a small trucking companies that only do FedEx work. And those guys hire drivers to drive FedEx freight and the FedEx trailers. So they're really more like owner operator fleets and stuff like that. So when you work for a FedEx contractor for a long time, making really good money and you, you get into the real shit times, like right now, where it's crappy and and FedEx lost a lot of freight. Guess what? You're you're sitting you're sitting on docks. Okay? And so what happens is and not every FedEx driver is a contract driver, but a lot of them are. You understand? I understand. So so the biggest problem when you go to get a job is your your FedEx contractor won't pick up the phone from your your the company that you applied with and say yes he's a truck driver here's his drug and alcohol results here's his accident results here's where he's been driving here's the kind of trailer he's been pulling here's what he's been doing for us here's the complaints here's the non complaints here's where he was good they can't get that they can't get the company to return the verification sheet and therefore their 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 insurance company can't hire this guy because there's the guy's like a ghost for the last five years, three years, or however long he's been working for the contractor. That's a shame. I know with, um, you know, PSP will come up and show certain things that the driver's been at certain companies, but they still need that reference from the company. And with the FMC SA regulations... They, they, uh, sorry, when uh, the fact that you said it kind of like threw me off, they, you know, the regulations state that you have to respond within 30 days with all of that required information. So it kind of like gets me that companies out there will still feel as though I'm going to have a DOT number, but I'm going to feel that I have every right to not follow any of your guidelines. Yeah. I, I, it's, it's almost like the, uh, um, frack companies out in Texas and up in North Dakota, the same type of companies, you know, you work there, you make really good money, but then when you go to get a job somewhere else, you can't get a job, a a real good job because you've been working for these freaking companies that are, that are, they don't, they don't run the same way as far as their business. They don't, they're not like this compliant company. So, you know, you, you, you're making a lot of money today and now there's a lot of FedEx guys that are going, I can't get a damn good job because nobody will hire me because my, my boss won't, won't verify that I worked it. This is ridiculous. It's, 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 it's crazy. And to be honest with you guys, if, if I were you guys, seriously, start reporting them to DOT, start reporting every one of these guys that will not comply. See a lot of drivers, they just take no for an answer when a company says, well, we can't get it verified. We can't hire you. So they just move on until they find something that's not going to verify it. And it ends up being a shit job. So if every one of you guys out there that has a, a contractor, okay, a, a frack company, any one of those companies, start, call your buddies that are working there that you know and say, hey, this, these, this company is not verifying our employment. And so every one of you start making a complaint against those contractors and then they'll get a DOT audit eventually. They will mm-hmm. eventually get in a lot of trouble because now people are making noise about them, okay? Heck, I wouldn't even care if you sued them. I mean, I'm serious. If they're going to make you into a ghost to where they think they're going to hold you hostage, you can't quit your job now because nobody's going to hire you without a verification. Mm-hmm. I would I would go put in complaints. That's what I would do. That's my advice. Okay. But did you have something? Well, I was also going to say you give the advice of putting the complaint in, but also keep record of your, your randoms, your drug tests, and your paychecks that will at least help yeah. with... With showing that you worked and you you provided the drug and alcohol randoms like that are required. So if you can at least try and keep some of that paperwork, if you need to do that. Yeah, if they can get their hands on the the, the drug and alcohol um, the results whenever they do randoms. I don't even know that the company gives them a copy of that. See, that's the problem with 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 these companies. They they don't give these guys records of anything, and then these guys are kind of high and dry looking for a little bit of help when they're going to quit these companies. It's, it's a bunch of crap that these drivers run into. 
I'm just telling you. Do you think that the uh, the the where they're getting the facility that they're going to get it done at? Don't you think that they should give the co- the driver a copy of the results direct? Yeah, but here's the problem. Oh, we, well, the problem is you go piss in a cup, and then the results don't come in for 24 to 48 hours. Okay, so therefore, how many drivers actually got a copy? If I was a driver when I went in to take a piss, I would I would definitely put down that I want the results sent to me also. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm sure you can do that. It's your it's your piss. Okay, agree. So why not why not ask them from now on? Only because, like Ruth Ann's saying, see, when you go to quit a company, here's what they need. They like I, I, I talked to a driver recently. He said, well, I got my W-2s. I got my 1099s that I can prove I was there. But that's not what the trucking company needs. Mm-mm. Okay, they need to see accident information. If you had any accidents, and you might say, well, I didn't have any accidents. But they need the company to verify that you had no accidents. And they also need the company to verify all your drug and alcohol results. They need a copy of that. Even though in your clearinghouse... Okay, there's no violations. They still need the results. So bottom line, guys, start asking when you go to do a random for the results. And so that's one of the one of the one of the guys that are having a hard time getting a job right now, Ruthann, that are in this bad economy. This is what I want to talk about for just a few minutes. Um, you got guys like that that their companies won't verify. Um, you got drivers with too many jobs. We mm-hmm. mentioned that guy this morning that had 25, 22 jobs, whatever it was, in three years. Mm-hmm. If you have too many jobs, if you're a job hopper right now, you're probably going to have a hard time getting a job. You might want to stay where you're at. Right. Okay. You might not want to quit because it is really a bitch to get a job right now. A good one, guys. Um, drivers with accidents. If you have accidents... Um, and you have a job right now and you're making a living, you might want to make sure before you leave that you have a job and ask the company, do I have a job as long as I pass the drug screen or do you have verifications and stuff you're waiting on till I get back? Um, I talked to a company the other day. He, they approved the driver to come into work. They approved a driver to come to work based on his DAC, his MVR, and a couple references they got back. Well, when he got to orientation on Monday, this was just uh, this past Monday, um, a verification they had been waiting for came in over the weekend with three accidents. One was a DOT recordable, preventable. They sent the guy home. They had to pay for the guy to get there. And then when when the reference came in, Guess what? They sent the guy home. So that's another thing you might want to ask these guys, these companies. Do you have everything you need? Because I don't want anything, you know, any anything at all that could possibly show up that's a that's going to, you know, kick me out of your orientation. Mm-hmm. Right? Right. So um, guys with accidents, guys with too many jobs, guys that are working for companies that won't verify your, your employment. Um, here's another guy that's not getting a job. The guys that live off the beaten path of companies, freight Ruth then, right? Why? Because freight volumes are down. This is a bad economy. So if you live out in the middle of nowhere, a hundred, I talking to a driver again, I was talking to a guy the other day, he was trying to get a job and he said this one company wouldn't hire him because he lived in Port Ritchie, Florida. Hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And he said they run up and down 75, uh, but he's wanting, this guy was wanting to go home like every other day. Right. And, and the company said that, no, we can't hire you and and send you home every other day. If you come on, you're out for uh, a week or two because we're not going to send you. It's, it was going to be 50 to 75 miles to send him home every day of deadheading, Mm -hmm. you know, till you got off the interstate and then got back on the interstate for taking a break at your house. They said, no, we're not going to do that. Mm -hmm. So he couldn't get a job. Why? Because freight is down. Freight rates are down. Um, He would have gotten a job if he would have wanted to be out more. Yeah. Here's another, here's another thing that's hurting drivers in, in bad times. um, This list that I'm giving you guys is a list of, of things that companies will not hire, man, unless they're desperate, you know, SAP drivers, you know, those, we mentioned it earlier. Anybody, uh, six months, back in August, up till August, if you were uh, had a drug failure, you'd get a job at 100,000 companies. They, they were hiring. They, they knew the freight was there. They, they didn't care. And so they were taking a chance and hiring you. Guess what? Those guys aren't getting any jobs right now. They were the first ones to go. You know who else is getting cut out right now? Drivers that are too old. Age discrimination. 
Okay? You get a guy that's 69, 70, 74. 70. I've talked to a bunch of guys in their 70s lately, and they said, nobody will hire me. In fact, he said, they're even telling me, man, we have a cutoff at 70. We have a cutoff at 72. We have a cutoff at 69. And, you know, to be honest with you, guys that are like 70, 75 years old today, that's not even that old. Hmm. I know so many people that are in their 80s and 90s, and they're in good shape. I mean, sincerely, if you can pass a DOT physical and, and you're looking, you know, you, you, you're, you don't have heart problems or whatever the case is, I would say you should be hired, but at the same time, it's not my call, you know? So right now, these are the drivers. If you have a job now, don't quit your job. No. This is really not good time to do it. The grass isn't greener on the other side. I'm just giving everybody a warning right now. Be careful right now, guys. It is brutal out there. Right? It is brutal right now. Yeah. So, guys, um, if you have major tickets... Um, 15 over stuff like that. It's they're, they're having a hard time, uh, uh, to getting, you know, a CDL had a, I was talking to a driver that, actually I was talking to a company the other day and they said, we, we had, we just turned a driver down. He said, we don't normally turn drivers like this down. And he said, the guy's application looked really good. The guy stayed at like two, you know, company for like a year here, six months there. He wasn't like a major job hopper. He had a few extra jobs. But every one of his references, when they checked him out, they said the guy's difficult to deal with. Mm -hmm. he, he had a clean record. He had no accidents. He had no tickets. This guy was an on-time delivery driver. But he they said he was a real, every Every company said the guy's a know-it-all. He's a pain in the ass. He's a whiner. He's a crybaby. He'll he flip out at you for, and he thinks he knows more than dispatch. Guess what? They're not taking those guys either. I can, you know, I hate to say it, but I can kind of see why they wouldn't. I mean, all they're doing is creating more of a heartache for him just because of the, the attitudes and stuff. Nobody wants to deal with that anymore right now. Well, right now, I mean, when you don't need a million drivers and you have now, you could say, okay, I'm only going to take the ones that really fit our company. Mm -hmm. Guess what, guys? You know, a lot of you guys are are, are going to be out right now. So that's why I said 2008 is all over again. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So here we are. And uh, just a little advice, guys. If you got a job and you know you got a bad record, you got some tickets, some accidents, maybe you're too old, maybe you're a SAP driver, okay, M you know, maybe you have some abandonments on your record, this is advice from Talk CDL. Keep your current job because the market is down right now. It's, it'll, it'll turn around again. You know why it's going to turn around, Ruthann? Because it always does. Yeah, but you know why it always does? Because of greed. Because the guy at the top that builds things and sells things and wants to make a billion dollars, those greedy guys, I'm being honest, the, the, the really the, t the top, top guys, you know, and, and maybe some of them ain't greedy, but the top, top guys, they aren't going to stand. And it's a good thing that they run, run their companies because they are not going to stand for low volume and low, low amount of workers and low wages and all that stuff. They are going to find a way to get business going. And the, gov the government's going to find a way. Believe it or not, I don't care what regime is in, they all need to get the country working. And so with, with all that being said, it will turn around. It just, you know, it, it, as long as the economy's been around, Ruthann, you have your good times and your bad times. And right now we have crap times. And that is my podcast do you have the word of the day i i do i do we're genius i would give the word of day in one second i do want to mention matt's real quick oh yeah oh, i'm sorry to even mention that yeah we're going to yep. be going to matt's we're going to be at matt's we are booth number six zero one four one please stop and say hi we'd love to meet everybody I west mean wing basically come out of the food court walk down the west wing and we're going to be right there on the right hand side yeah, right across from the Kentucky State Police. Now, the Kentucky State Police are going to be like, yeah, we heard your podcast the other day. <laughs> <laughs> you hate cops. I, I, <laughs> I, I don't, They're going to be eyeballing you, that hairy eyeball. They're yeah. going to be like, there's that guy with the big mouth. I Actually, I don't hate cops, but I don't I, I Listen, if you're, if you're a law enforcement officer, then learn the laws you have to enforce. Don't break them yourself. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll, I'll leave you with this one thing. I watched a video this morning on, on, uh, on Fox, and uh, a, a captain got pulled over DUI by a sergeant, and the captain asked the sergeant to turn off his camera. And the sergeant said, I don't turn it off for anybody, sir. He said, if you were a, uh, I don't care if you're a gangbanger or the president of the United States. He said, I am not going to, to um, treat anybody any different. 
and he gave him a sobriety test and then arrested the, his own, you know, the captain. So that's res- I have respect for that cop. He did his job. He he upheld the law and he protected the public from this guy, even though the thin blue line was there. So I'm not putting cops down. I'm just saying the bad ones I don't like, just like the bad truckers, you know, need to get their asses fixed too. Moving on, Ruthann. Moving on. To the word of the day by Word Genius. Word Genius. Hmm. Consentient. Do it again. Consentient. 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 So what is consentient? Of the same opinion in a matter. In agreement. So when you agree with someone, it's consentient. What, what's that word? Concur? No, there's another one. Con, con, con something. Concur. Con, consentient. But this is consentient. So concur and consention pretty much mean the same thing. So yeah. we are in agreement with Toxie to help you in the best stop. All right. Guys, get out to Matt's at the Kentucky, what's it called? The Louisville Truck Show in St. Matt's, Idaho. Mid-American Truck Show. All right. All right. Thank you. We're out of here, Ruthann. Peace. Peace. Praise the Lord.